So, uh, are the Bulls back? Is this the team we have been wanting to see all season? I hesitate to say this just after two games. The first back-to-back -back win for the Bulls so far this season. And even with that, they still remain seven games below 500. But hey, baby steps. Baby steps. And yeah, it's two games since we've seen a noticeable difference in the way this team has been playing. And really, I need to see that over an extended period of time before I get a little too excited. Because we did see glimpses of the Bulls doing this last year, where it looked like they finally figured things out. They had multiple three game winning streaks and then would kind of revert back to their old ways one step forward, two step backwards. But what I will say is what's different about what we've seen in just these two games is the pace and speed at which they play and the scrappiness for how they play on defense. Like, even even during those nice stretches last season where you thought that they were getting things together, you never saw the group look scrappy when they were out there. They were playing well together, they were moving the ball around, playing as a team, but they still weren't diving for loose balls. They weren't getting in the faces of their opponent when guarding them on the perimeter. They weren't looking determined and wanting to win on a consistent basis. And there was never, never this level of energy that we've seen from the guys over these past two games. Like, these guys are actually having fun out there playing together. I honestly don't think I could say that at all last season and this season, quite frankly. And you can't emphasize enough how important that is for the guys to be vibing with one another and keeping that morale up. And look, it's not like these past two wins were against the Pistons and Wizards. These were two solid wins against good teams. Now, the Pelicans were without CJ McCollum, but he's been out for most of the season. They've still done well without him. And yes, the Pelicans did play last night, so you'd expect them to be a little more tired. And they did look a little lethargic at times out there, especially with how poorly they came out to start the third quarter and blew their lead in a hurry. But regardless, this is still a good Pelicans team. And for the Bulls to come out, play with the level of confidence and the same level of energy they did the other night. And also without Zach Levine, and mind you, Caruso didn't return after halftime, only playing 13 minutes from that toe injury. That's impressive for a team that was down and out on each other after that embarrassing loss against the Celtics in Boston. And we've talked about this before, guys stepping up. Who's going to step up when guys are out? And not even just out, but who's going to step up whenever Levine gets traded because he will eventually be traded? Who's going to make up for that scoring? Well, cue Kobe White. Kobe White was phenomenal tonight. And I'm obviously going to talk about how great Kobe was right now, but I also don't think it should be understated that it was a collective effort by the team to come together and show up the way that they did. Everybody played their part and did their job, except maybe Vucevic, who didn't have the best game. But for Kobe White, arguably the best game of his career, a season high 31 points on insane efficiency, 10 for 17 from the field, 8 for 13 from three, eight threes, which tied his career high. I actually remember that game when he had those eight threes, both him and Zach Levine each had eight in that one. That was before the Vucevic trade and everything, but eight threes. Kobe just continues to feel it from behind the arc and has quickly become the Bulls' best three-point shooter. Hell, even one of the best three-point shooters in the NBA right now when you consider his volume and shooting percentage. But look, it wasn't just his scoring, which obviously the Bulls needed in Levine's absence, but he was doing everything on the court. Drawing charges, active hands on defense, skying high for rebounds. He had nine rebounds in this one to go along with six assists. I'm serious, I feel like this has to be Kobe's best game of his career. And you know what makes it even more encouraging is we're finally seeing Kobe play well consistently. The team may not have been doing well, but for the past six or seven games, Kobe White has been the only constant on this team that you could rely upon for offense and rely upon for three-point shooting. For a guy who I always criticize for being one of the most inconsistent players in the NBA is finally starting to string great games together and giving us more confidence that he can do this on a nightly basis. And then, of course, speaking of consistency, I mean, Patrick Williams, what is this, five, six straight games and double figures, whereas at the start of the season, it seemed like he could barely scratch five points, some games not having a single point at all. Pat's three ball was off tonight, but he made up for it with his aggression in the paint. And man, that dagger alley-oop at the end of the game, that got me out of my chair screaming. And here's the thing, while Pat is still not some offensive savant, the dude is quietly having one of his best defensive seasons of his career when you look at his effective defensive field goal percentage and then going up against someone like Zion Williamson tonight, I mean, it's still Zion, but he handled his own, stayed his ground, he also finished the game with two blocks and two steals. And then DeMar DeRozan, you know, looking like the old DeMar, efficient on offense, 10 for 18, 2 for 4 from 3, 24 points, 10 assists. I mean, here's the thing, I know a lot of people will say, well, DeMar holds us back. He slows down the overall offense, and yes, to an extent that is true, but there is something to be said about having a bucket getter in late game situations where you don't falter at the end and can't close games like you almost saw the other night against the Milwaukee Bucks. And if DeMar can see how these guys were playing while he was out, 
commit to playing fast, commit to being more of a facilitator on offense, still getting his shots when he needs to, but committing to that role and then being that killer in the fourth quarter when the Bulls really need him to be. I really do think good things can happen for the Bulls if they go that route. And I actually think with how professional DeMar DeRozan is, his willingness to want to win, he would accept that type of role. I still think he's going to get traded and probably should be traded, but I don't doubt that he would be willing to play that type of offense, the high pace offense that the Bulls want to play. Vucevic, yeah, not a good game for him. I mean, he doesn't really usually match up well against Valanciunas, but yeah, tonight he just couldn't get anything going with his shot. 3 for 12, 0 for 5 from 3. But the good thing about Vucevic is that even when his shot isn't falling, he's still able to contribute on offense with his court vision and passing. Some insane passes from Vucevic that he had in finding the backdoor cutter to the basket. He did finish the game with 4 assists. And then how about the bench tonight? Coming up big, particularly Io and Torrey Craig. I'll start with Craig because... We've been kind of waiting to see him be this three-point shooter that the Bulls signed him for in free agency. And aside from those first couple of games, he really hasn't been that guy. But tonight, he's one of the most impactful players out there. Not only with his shooting, putting up 15 points, was 3 for 4 from deep, but also his rebound and creating second chance opportunities, offensive rebounds, deflecting the ball, agitating the Pelicans on offense. Man was plus 16 tonight which was a team high. And then for Io, I mean, the dude is already showing to us he's ready. A bounce back year after a sophomore slump because Io loves playing fast. He loves showing off that speed, getting downhill in transition, but it's also his ability to help push the pace and finding the outlet pass. 15 points for Io tonight, two steals, another solid game for him after starting against the Milwaukee Bucks the other night. Oh, also Andre Drummond, man. What an incredible impact that he had on the start of that fourth quarter to give Vucevic a breather, just grabbing all of those rebounds, putting it back up. There was nothing the Pelicans could do to get the ball away from him. That was incredible. Uh, what's crazy is the Bulls dominated the Pelicans on three. 17 threes to the Pels, 8. Bulls shot 17 for 40 from 3. Helps when Kobe goes off like he did. But that is not something we typically see from the Bulls, a team to shoot it at that clip on that volume. And guess what? Assist numbers. 32 assists yet again, a season high against the Bucks the other night. They tie it again tonight with another 32. Again, ball movement, player movement. When executed well, that's what makes basketball so fun and exciting to watch. And it's why, dare I say it, I actually enjoy watching this team play again. I know it's just two games, and who knows, maybe they revert back to their old ways, but I actually have fun watching this team play, and I really hope it continues. The Bulls are off for a bit until Wednesday, so a nice long break before they take on the Hornets. A good opportunity for three straight wins. We'll see. I'll still have content between now and then, though, guys. Until then, as always, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.